Welcome, everyone, to Episode 7 of Getting Your Edge, How to Right Size Your Home and Life Podcast, brought to you by the fabulous Edge Group team. We're here to give you an edge in all your real estate needs. We have a very informative show for you today. I'm your host, Dennis Day, and my usual co-host, Judy Gratton, is recovering from sh shoulder surgery. Ouch. And she can't be with us today. Judy, we wish you a speedy recovery. I'm really excited about uh, to introduce our special guest here, Mike Rue of Evergreen Wealth Managers. Uh, Mike is an independent full-service financial service firm serving the greater Seattle area and based in Bothell. Welcome, Mike Rue. Dennis, good morning. Nice to be here. Before we get going on this interview, I want to remind you, this podcast is free to all with no subscription fees or advertising. So I'm asking you to please send us a feedback through Apple Podcasts. Subscribe or follow us. Give us a star rating on Spotify or other directory. Share the podcast link with someone who could use the information. This would really help us out in building our audience. Thank you. And I do have a special offer at the end of this podcast, so be sure to stay tuned to the very end. Let's get started. Mike Rue, give us a little history about you and what you offer people in financial advising. Oh, terrific. Uh, I'm a, a, a financial planner and I've had a, a practice for uh, oh, about 30 years now. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working under the auspices of an independent financial firm, uh, broker dealer is, is, the, is what they call it. And uh, so I'm not, uh, the advice I give is my own. And uh, the oversight is through uh, through that kind of uh, that kind of organization. Uh, I work with retirees, pre-retirees, folks who need some help uh, getting uh, getting some organization and risk management and uh, how how to uh, grow investments and make it work for them. Oftentimes it's retirement, sometimes it's college planning, sometimes it's new businesses, that kind of thing. But doing it for quite a long time and uh, enjoy it. I've got the best job in the world perhaps uh, next to yours, right? Oh, well, yeah. I, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> do you want to add a little thing about your family life, maybe oh, your right. hobbies and things like that? I hear you're sure. a woodworker. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I live in Boston, my wife and I. We have two cats. Uh, if anyone wants a cat, just give a holler. We can, we can work something out. Uh, uh, I'm uh, active in the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce. I'm a past president and active in the community, just uh, doing stuff, which, which uh, volunteer stuff, which I enjoy. Uh, I've got a shop in my house that I make sawdust and, uh, uh, and make furniture for uh, friends and family and, our, and ourselves. So I just uh, making sawdust is what I call it. Uh, and uh, it, it filled up a couple of houses full of furniture that, that I made. Uh, I enjoy doing that. It's one of the several hobbies that I have. Awesome. Okay. I wanted to let you know that our edge group team has really geared our business towards helping people who want or need to right size their life, meaning their home is not working for them. They need a change. Uh, question I ask you, the questions I ask you would be related to the people who are thinking of downsizing. Right. So going from that forever home and finding the right fit and the lifestyle that they want to live. Um, let me show you a graphic I'm gonna share. There we go. Okay. So we've got a lot of people here who are in their big oh. forever home. They've probably paid the mortgage off. Maybe they have some residual uh, mortgage left from a remodel or something, but basically they're, they've got a large quantity of it equity in their home. It's too big. They are tired of the maintenance, uh, their yard work and all those things, maybe even high taxes. So they're ready to make a change. Right. And those options are endless. Uh, really they go to a condo, the Rambler, the RV moving to changing to a multi-generational household, renting, selling, and then renting, living abroad, a manufactured home or even a retirement community, all kinds of choices there. Yes. 
So my question is, Mike, before downsizing process begins yeah. and the home is sold financially, what would you suggest these homeowners do first? Well, I think these are big decisions uh, for, for folks. And these are typically uh, people in their 60s, 70s. Uh, uh, but every situation is different. Uh, there are a couple of uh, several aspects to this. So some of them is are financial, which is an area that that uh, I work in. How to make uh, how to make assets of any kind, whether they're it's a newly sold house or assets that you already have, into income, uh, and that's uh, that's in that's in my uh, in my wheelhouse on how to kind of sort that out. But the other side of that is lifestyle. Uh, folks who are uh, in that situation that you described are making these big decisions and and they're not easy to make and they're, it, it involves change. This is a way of been doing it for 30, 40, however, however many years that they're, that they're doing this and maybe their kids are saying or maybe they're coming to that own realization that we got to be in a different thing and it's hard. Uh, the the uh, Just the 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 size of the project of getting rid of stuff, the 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 feeling of uh, uh, of what it feels like to to move from a house you've been in for a long time to move into a new and foreign uh, uh, I don't not foreign but a, a new environment that they have to get used to. So it, it kind of requires kid gloves oftentimes to make that happen for professionals such as you. Who are suggesting making suggestions about that, and both were, uh, in, you know, what kinds of these decisions that you pointed out, whether it's with a small house or apartment or retirement community or any number of things, um, and just how to make that work out. What uh, is involved in that, in the front end, is to get an assessment of what you have and what your income needs are, and the value of your house. Uh, and uh, equity of the house. Sometimes there's a mortgage, sometimes not. Um, and to see if the if the math works. Uh, get an assessment of how much the house is worth, and then assess your other finances as well. Absolutely. Um, and a real important part of that, uh, and I ask this uh, question of my clients a lot, and, and they frequently don't know or don't know accurately, is how much do you spend every month on stuff as some people will live on on two or three thousand dollars a month some people will, will live on twenty thousand dollars a month just on on paying the bills and and the lifestyle that you've dialed into this point and those things matter a lot uh, <clears throat> the the size of your nest egg will support um, a certain level of income for the rest of your life uh, and sometimes it's plenty big. I, I've got a million dollars and I only spend $2,000 a month. You're golden. But if you've got $20,000 and you spend $10,000 a month, the math doesn't work. So <laughs> either you, you, yourself do that, do that uh, kind of analysis or have somebody help you do that. That's an area that I, I certainly can uh, be, of, uh, uh, be of help with. Uh, but uh, the amount of your assets, uh, what a, a differential would be if you're going from a big house to a small house. Well, what you know, what's left after you're done after you're done doing that? Should you have a mortgage on the second house? Sometimes that makes sense. Um, uh, uh, and just see if the income supports what you're considering doing. Great. Now, Mike, you before we uh, go went to this interview, I. We talked and you said your business, you like to take a holistic approach to financial ma management. Can you explain what that means to our listeners? Well, in the, in the marketplace out there of people who do things similar to mine, uh, are, uh, 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 it, it's hard for a consumer to know who you're talking with. Uh, what, what are their qualifications? Are they representing you? Are they representing a company? Are they uh, selling insurance? Are they selling uh, you know, things like that? Um, uh, and how, how they are compensated uh, matters. Um, but <clears throat> so it, it, uh, if you're looking for somebody to, uh, uh, to be of the most help in my opinion, somebody who has a teamwork, uh, has a team of financial people, uh, real estate people, 
uh, oftentimes legal people, uh, lawyers, who can help uh, with uh, uh, estate planning issues, which is its own uh, its own large topic uh, and an important one. Uh, accounting, uh, uh, the, the things that come up with uh, sales of houses, um, and coordination of all of this. And it's common for a person to get conflicting advice. I, I called my accountant and he said, this is too much tax, don't do it, uh, without knowing all the other, all the other uh, uh, things that are get, uh, involved in that. I called my real estate person, he's gonna charge a big percentage for a, for, a, <laughs> for a transaction and that's too much, I can't pay it. Well, let's take a step back and take a bigger picture here. Um, and, uh, and, and get the, the people in the same room here, uh, if needed, uh, to uh, look at the big picture here, rather than just a little slice of the, of the, of the problem that you're dealing with. So those, these, these people, the lawyers, the uh, accountants, and so tend to be in silos, and with your holistic approach, you're, you think this is more helpful to, to clients? No question. No okay. question. Yeah. Uh, Social Security is an important part of retirement. Could the sale of a home and downsizing have an impact on someone's Social Security income? So, uh, no, is the short answer. The Your Social Security will remain the same uh, uh, if you are, regardless of where you're living. Uh, but there are some, definitely some Social Security uh, uh, issues that come up. If you are in your 60s, typically, uh, you have choices, your choice as to when to start up Social Security. You can start up anytime between age 62 and 70. And that's a, that's a decision on this, uh, on this grid, on uh, 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 financial planning stuff, is when to do that. Uh, the, sale of a, the sale of a home, if, if you're in your 60s and you have not taken, uh, or, uh, not yet started up Social Security, the sale of the home might uh, enable you to push back this decision to take it later for a higher dollar amount. Uh, it, it's the sooner you start, uh, if you start at 62, you're going to get X. If you wait till 66, it's going to be X plus 20%. And if you wait till you're 70, it'll be X plus 40, 45%, something like that, a much bigger number. Um, so as we analyze your income flow, your income need, and the, and where your sources of income are, social security, the timing of when to start Social Security matters, uh, depending on the other assets that you have. Um, if you've already started it, it's you're locked in. Okay, so if they've already started collecting Social Security, it's not really an issue whether they sell their home or or not. Right, right, but. Uh, if if you are uh, depending on your age group and health and, and such, if you have a spouse who dies, uh, that can uh, and oftentimes these kinds of downsizing are triggered by events like that. Yes. Um, so the social security income will uh, will uh, will go down because you're having two two folks down to one per, uh, one uh, surviving uh, spouse. The surviving spouse will generally uh, get the higher of the two social securities. If someone if, if, if someone's getting $2,500 a month, someone's getting $1,800 a month, uh, the survivor will get $2,500 a month uh, like that. But if, 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 uh, uh, if there's a death of a, a spouse, income goes down. And so that needs to enter into, the, uh, enter into this picture as you're doing income projections and income needs. So this... Uh can often lead up uh, selling a home like this can often lead to a, a large quantity if they have equity in the home right are there should downsizers work worry about the tax liability of be, their home being sold well uh, the the issue is capital gains um, not everyone will pay capital gains uh, and the capital gains means uh, what you uh, what you pay for a house uh, or uh, securities too. There's uh, is not only houses. Um, uh, if you paid, uh, if you got, if a couple, for example, bought a house in 1970, and it was worth by today's standards not very much, 
$100,000 and then here it is in 2023 and they sell it for a million dollars. Uh, and that's not an uncommon scenario. Uh, uh, Uncle Sam will say that $900,000 is capital gains. Now you get an exemption from that. They'll give you, is it 500, 500K? Um, uh, then as a married couple, and then you, the capital gains of that would be 400K. You pay up 15 to 20% of that. So in that scenario, yes. Uh, and so, uh, but if it's, if they bought it at uh, $700,000 and sold for a million, then it's not. Okay. So those, those numbers matter. Uh, and a tax professional should be involved. And that's where uh, getting one involved early here to make that a, a more firm number for which you to make your uh, decisions on is an important part of, uh, of this process. Another thing that enters into capital gains is if, if a spouse dies. Uh, there's a step up in basis, it's called, where, where the date of death is now the new marker of where you're computing the capital gains from. A uh, uh, accounting professional should be involved in that discussion as well. Uh, but that's uh, from, a, from a purely financial point of view, uh, that that is a, uh, a, tax, uh, a tax event that you need to pay attention to in that as part of that decision. Okay, so the, the widow or a widower yeah. could have a, a, some relief from that huge tax, yeah. tax bill. Uh, but uh, and l let's say that you uh, that you, you've done the transaction or intend to do the transaction, and the accountant says, "Okay, you're you've got you've got a large uh, you've got a large check in your in your that we just sent you, five hundred thousand million dollars, whatever the number is, set aside one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Set it aside because next spring you're going to be paying that." next, you know, the, the spring following the year in which it happened. Um, and so the, you segregate that or you can actually prepay it if you want to by making a quarterly payment um, and, and just build that into the, build that into the plan. It, it, it happens, it, it's usually not as big as, uh, as people uh, uh, fear that it's going to be, but it's, uh, uh, and it frequently doesn't happen at all but it's it's a it's an item that you need to know about okay kind of going back to the holistic approach so you've talked about working with a real estate professional to help someone assess their home yeah a, a tax advisor yeah an accountant yeah you as a financial planner and even a lawyer for well, downsizing is uh, not uh, uh, necessarily um, uh, related to downsizing. Uh, I say downsizing is not related to estate planning. Uh, estate planning uh, is something that uh, in my conversations uh, always comes up with my clients. Do, do you have your will or, uh, or, or alternative uh, to uh, move assets that you have uh, when you die to somebody who remains? It's really important, and it's not, and it's pretty painless. Um, so, uh, uh, when when there's when a uh, if you're a married couple and you move from A to B, nothing legally happens in terms of your estate plan. When people die or become infirm, if they become unhealthy and can no can no longer make decisions on their behalf, uh, then having uh, powers of the appropriate powers of attorney in in in, in place to make those kinds of difficult decisions is important and it's so much easier to do on the front end of that as it is trying to do that after the fact then it becomes much more complex expensive and lengthy um, and you may not get the results you want an attorney uh, should be involved in this process so is the state planning part of your uh absolutely absolutely though i'm not okay. an attorney uh, I'm very conversant in the in the issues uh, that that they deal with, uh, and I am oftentimes sitting in the attorney's office with the with the client, saying, "Let's get this squared away. Here's the here's the money side of this, and I know how that's working. Let's coordinate that with the, with the legal work that uh, needs to be done." Uh, 
the 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 higher the net worth of the client, the more important this is. How do you choose the people you work with in all these different areas? Oh well, because I've I've been doing this for a while, I get uh, acquainted with these folks professionally from any number of sources, other referrals, or just people I've known really sometimes for 15, 20 years or more. Uh, and I've worked with them and I know how they do. There are some uh, professionals that I work with them and I say, let's not use this person anymore. Uh, even highly qualified and uh, credentialed folks sometimes don't follow up well, or it's not their specialty or you know they're overworked and understaffed or it's an empty uh, quick answer so it's a selective process and it evolves uh, so some of them uh, go in and out i've had accountants and lawyers uh, and others uh, with real estate folks uh, associated with my business for 20 years and they and i fine-tune them over over time so you vetted over the 20 years you vetted your uh, partners yes absolutely okay. absolutely so downsizing process, um, you oftentimes get a large quantity of money at yeah. once. Yeah. Can you give me some situations where that can be problematic? Well, we, we discussed the capital gains. Uh, sometimes there's family dynamics uh, that need to uh, play into this. And if, if uh, uh, you have uh, family, kids, who um, uh, are perhaps not on the, uh, uh, of the highest ethics or <laughs> who, who, are <laughs> who are especially needy and, and that kind of thing, uh, it's certainly been known to happen where they take advantage of um, uh, moms or dads um, inability to make decisions or or unwillingness to upset the apple cart that kind of thing uh, you know i need a i need a new car a new horse or a new <laughs> a new something and oh, okay yeah that's fine and and i've seen this uh, where that's there the uh, someone in that situation the family in that situation has just barely enough to to get by and then someone you know family members doing doing this and saying i need money i need money and it's to their detriment. My, I say, my advice when that happens is, um, that's not sustainable for you to do that financially. Can we find another way? And I'm successful only part of the time on that. <laughs> you, uh, uh, and, it, and it creates situations which are uh, which are uh, compromising to a, can be compromising to our client. That's not the only thing that can happen, but that's one of them. It's been. Uh kind of told, I wouldn't say told, but it's been mentioned that Americans have most of their wealth in their family home. Is that really true? That's frequently true. Lots of exceptions, but uh, that's frequently true. Um, uh, it depends on your age. You know, if you're, if you're 70, it's almost always true. If you're 25, it's almost never true. Uh, but it's so it just kind of depends on what stage of life you're in that that, that that's uh, that's the case. Okay. And when when you sell a house or sell a home or any other large asset, the usually uh, the question that comes up for perhaps you and uh, for me in my business is how do I um, turn this in this this proceed into a a sustainable income stream. Uh, and almost always when I have it, you've got a half million dollars here. How much uh, income can I get? Uh, or can this add to my income stream uh, to last for uh, the rest of my life? And the answer is easy if you tell me how long you're going to live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and they Click usually want it there. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> and, and they shrug, you know. But and if you do that, I can have you spend the last dollar on the last day. But uh, other considerations come up in there. There's a there's a kind of a quick shorthand that uh, that you need to take with a grain of salt. But if you have uh, if you have um, uh, if you take a five percent withdrawal, let's say you're in your seventies or mid seventies, and you take a five percent withdrawal from your nest egg. 
it'll almost always sustain you for the rest of your life. So a half million dollars in the, let's call it bank, but uh, uh, if you took um, uh, $2,000 a month, that's $24,000 a year of income to your stream, it'll almost certainly uh, uh, be there for, it'll, it'll outsurvive you. Um, and, and it can be a legacy for kids, which is important to some people and not for others. So that's, that's part of this process. Or if you take $4,000 a month, double that, then you'll have a declining, a declining balance. And that's sort of okay, depending on how steep this curve is. It's okay if, the, if, if you run out of money when you're in the numbers, say when you're 105, that kind of works. But if you if you're over if you're over withdrawing to that it runs out when you're 81, that's not good. That's not good. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and my job is to is to make sure that this is sustainable and all. And I'm uh, in my in my position here. I'm uh, ethically and legally involved or, or labeled as a fiduciary, which means that I make recommendations based on not on my own needs or compensation, but on the needs of the client. Uh, and, and, and I, I take that very seriously and, and employ it in my practice. Are there times when a homeowner shouldn't downsize? Oh, maybe, um, uh, more of a lifestyle decision than anything else. I, I have a client who lives up in, uh, uh, Arlington and she's 90. She's 90 and her husband died here four or five years ago. She's got this big three or 4,000 square foot rambler uh, that she's lived in for well, ever since I've known her, or no, 30, 40 years, a long time. And her, her health is starting to become an issue, but she has good support. She loves her house. Uh, she's mobile. She has good uh, family support around her and knows who to call when the roof leaks and enough assets that that's, that, that works for her. And that's, that's fine. Uh, uh, should she be downside? No, I don't, this, this still works for her. Uh, and so, okay, that comes up. It, it's a little uncommon, uh, but, it, uh, but it, it certainly comes up. Should they make a plan for the next move though? Well, yes. <laughs> um, if, if you're considering which the what you don't want to be um, uh, 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 an event you don't want to have happen, and this is a, a family thing, is when you're of advanced age and perhaps declining health, uh, and uh, and postponing this decision to move. Uh, uh, is not to have something, uh, at least a plan in place and having a professional kind of be able to look out for you. If what can happen that is, uh, creates uh, problems for families is when mom falls and breaks a bone and you need, or breaks a hip or whatever, and you need, to, we, we need to find a home for her next Tuesday. Um, you know, fast. There are professionals who do that, and I uh, and I know several of them who who are uh, work in retirement places and and sometimes long term care facilities. Uh, that uh, uh, that's all they do is find the best one and the best location, the price, all that sort of stuff, so that it fits into this person. And having those conversations can't hurt at all. But it, uh, it would be unusual for someone who's healthy and active and uh, to uh, and otherwise happy with where they are. Um, to uh, to uh, pull that trigger because then you, you start a process. But having these ha having these folks and these connections ahead of time always a good idea. I make a plan. I have personal experience on that when yeah. my mother and father wanted to go into a a retirement community together, and then after just even a few days, my uh, father we, we really discovered that this facility could not give him proper care and had to move him immediately. Uh, it, it was very, very difficult and stressful and you're making decisions, uh, you know, on the fly. 
Yeah. So yeah, make a plan. All you baby boomers, <laughs> right. your plans with your parents <laughs> and, and be ready. I believe me from personal experience, it, you will uh, benefit from having some kind of ideas of what you want to do right. in My the mother, future. Uh, is 91, uh, 92 here next week. Um, and we, uh, about 12, 13 years ago, we built a, we built a new house and then, and provided a mother-in-law apartment for her downstairs with her own access and parking, that kind of thing. And she's going through that now. And, and in the last year, her, uh, health is declining some, somewhat sharply, but, um, uh, but, but still that's a very comfortable environment for her and for us as care caregivers. Um, she's, we've recently, um, uh, 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 removed her keys for her car, <laughs> which is, <laughs> which was, uh, difficult. And uh, I don't, uh, I, I feel the same way, but it's those kinds of things that come up that you have to kind of massage and, and do that. But she's, this has worked out really well for her and for us. Um, uh, and there might be a time where that, where we're, we're not, uh, we're not able to continue to provide that, but it's just that, that kind of stuff that you need, uh, I've got good contacts to make that happen, but it's, uh, it, yeah, it happens for folks. Uh, uh, you, you're over 50, right? And I'm over 50. Uh, yeah. Barely. Uh, <laughs> barely. Uh, <laughs> where, where those, uh, where aging parents become uh, are certainly an issue. Is there anything else you'd like to tell our listeners and viewers about preparing for retirement and downsizing? Well, uh, I, I, I'm a planner, so always have a plan, you know, and uh, be proactive on it rather than, rather than try to put uh, pieces together when, when craziness happens on you suddenly. Uh, and it, it, it costs nothing to do that. If you, if you want to have a consultation with me, I'll gladly provide that at no cost. Uh, okay. Uh, to anyone who wants to, uh, who, who wants to have a more detailed uh, 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 discussion, happy to do it. Um, uh, so, uh, take advantage of that. I'd be in, I think you have my contact information. There. Yeah. Let's share that screen here. That's the one we want. There we go. There so we go. they can reach you at this they can. evergreen wealth managers. Yeah. And there's here's the address a, uh, based in Bothell, uh, Washington. Yeah. There should be a, uh, email there too, as well. Uh, what, what is the email, uh, excuse me, the website address? Uh, evergreenplanning.com evergreenplanning.com great yeah, yeah. Okay. happy to help um, thank you Mike for yeah, joining us I appreciate um, the invitation and uh, happy to help anytime so that's it for our episode number seven of the Edge Group Real Estate Team How to Right Size Your Home and Life podcast as always we have a freebie packed with our information Mike's going to send us some information about, well, um, downsizing, planning, and so forth. Downsizing, you can give him a ring. And as I said, we're going to have a special gift from the Edge Group team. If you are the first person to give us a five-star review of this podcast at Apple Podcasts, and we only can do it at Apple Podcasts because that is the only place right now that we know where you can leave a review. All the other places you can leave stars, ratings, but Apple is the only one that gives a review. If you send us a five-star review, we'll email you a $25 Amazon gift card for just taking a few minutes to say a couple of sentences. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you for all of you who stayed with this program and follow us or subscribe, like, share, comment, on any of our previous comment uh, podcasts. And thank you for watching and or listening. That's it. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Dennis. All right. Thank you very much. Goodbye.